first off, really quick, I made a review for episode two, but I never published it on this channel because I got distracted by life. I'm easily distractible. So if you want to see my review for episode two, you can go to the video description below and I have a link to it. So we begin this episode with Negative Nancy just attacking the Legends crew because apparently time traveler means just kill anyone that's a time traveler that you think done it. Best plan, murder the fuck out of someone you don't know is guilty or not. And I love how Vixen was running her mouth last episode about whether people were heroes or not. And she was going around telling people, oh, you're not a hero. You did something heroic, but you're not a superhero. And yet she's the one going around trying to kill people without proof that they killed her friend. Not very heroic, Vixen. Luckily she fails and Nate gets superpowers, which I absolutely loved how excited he was about them. And I'm really hoping his performance issues was basically CW going, fuck, we didn't think this through. He's gonna destroy our budget. Okay, okay, okay. Think of something for a reason for him to be in his, his normal form most of the time. Uh, 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 he's having trouble triggering his powers. Oh, thank God that guy was gonna blow through all our money. I also like how Ray and Haywood are supposed to be relatively intelligent human beings, and yet they thought it was a good idea to have Ray blast Nate on a ship. So whatever, they're idiots. Nate and Ray end up in 1641 Japan. And I don't know about you, but I was laughing hysterically when Nate landed in that time period. The first couple bounces he did, they were okay. And then it's like CW took it two steps too far. And when he just kept bouncing over and over and over again, it just became so comical. CW, whether that was intentional or not, it was hilarious, so bravo. Nate always seems to do a really good job of blending in with the locals and in the time period. And he even started off this episode really well, just blending in, making up these excuses and talking in a relatively believable way. And then he just went full fucking spoilers. I was kind of disappointed how much Haywood was just spouting off information. You're supposed to be preserving history, you dummy. I know he's excitable, but come on, he says in a volume she can definitely hear United States, which you never heard of because it doesn't exist for another 200 years. Historians remember him as a brutal warlord. Nate. Shut the fuck up. Stop running your mouth. Shh. Though super impressive when that woman didn't freak out when he transformed, she just took that all in stride. Maybe she knows her family's destined to be superheroes. I'd wink there, but I'm actually really tired. Ray seriously needs to get his suit glued or staple gun to him. I guess it doesn't matter anymore, but my God, Ray, how many times are you going to have that thing taken from you? And still on Ray, I talked in my episode two review how upset I was getting with the Justice Society and how they were talking down to the legends and basically telling them, we're heroes, you're not, you're way beneath us, we're better in every way. And it just, it really started to grate on me because heroes are supposed to inspire you and lift you up. And it just felt like the entire time they were just dragging them through the mud. And I think Vixen was the worst out of all of them. And Vixen seriously got into Ray's head finally. And, and Sarah did it too. She's not free from guilt here, but Ray honestly believed, okay, well, I guess I'm, I'm really not a hero. I'm just some dude in a suit, which is just such fucking bullshit. Everything we know of Ray, he is definitely a hero. He is a, he's a fucking hero. I just don't, I don't understand one, how Vixen can just go in and say, nope, you're not a hero. You did something heroic. You're not a superhero. Yeah, he kind of fucking is. He has risked his life so many times for other people. Some guy he barely even knows got off that ship and he went after him. He didn't know if he was gonna die. He didn't know if he'd be able to get to Nate. He just did it. So I was actually really upset this episode when he started to listen to those cunts saying that he's not a hero and felt like, well, without my suit, I'm just, I'm just a normal man. No, you're not, Ray. Don't let people define you. Fuck those people. Lastly, Jefferson and Stein was finding that compartment more important than fixing the rest of the ship, especially if you did just tease us about something going on with Barry, who apparently decades in the future has gotten over his time altering fetish and is trying to be extremely careful about it. So there is hope for the future. 
Random thoughts, I don't know about you, but did you notice those bright lights uh, doing the transitions this episode? They were getting a, a little intense for me. Did, did you guys watch a J.J. Abrams movie and decide those, those light flares, those are hot right now. I think I'm partially blinded. Sarah's best moment of this episode was definitely stating League of Assassins, Class of 09. It's the little moments that really make this show. And I have to say, Ray's armor with the samurai helmet was badass. I think Ray should build another suit and it should have that fucking samurai helmet. That was so awesome. Oh, oh wait, and also, Mick saying, I don't want to hurt you, I love ninjas, was the most adorable thing ever. And I never say Mick is adorable, ever. So I thought this was a fun episode, and I really hope the next time Vixen tells someone they're not a hero, someone just walks around a corner and just fucking knocks her out. So thank you so much for watching my review of Legends of Tomorrow. Make sure you like this video and come back for more TV reviews every week.